Hello, my name is Merrick Chad, and today I'm going to be talking about the triboelectric effect. So, just hopping straight into it. The first time I heard about the triboelectric effect, I wondered, I had no idea what it meant. So, usually when I have trouble understanding what a word means, I like to break it down and look up the etymology of a word. So the prefix tribo means, um, in Greek, it means rub and refers to friction. Um, and it refers to tribology. And so I looked up the word tribology. And it's actually the study of friction, wear, lubrication, and the design of bearings, which I thought was interesting because obviously, um, as man has progressed, we have begun to make our own machinery and one of probably the most important things when we are um, especially w with machinery that has moving parts it's important to study the um, how the parts wear and um, just how friction has an effect on the longevity of this machine so I thought that was super interesting already and then we have the suffix electric we all know what the word electric means and in class we kind of talked a little bit about how amber was kind of the first material that was studied that led us to the discovery of the electron and finally effect is the execution or completion of an of an act so put it all together the tribal electric effect is more or less the execution or completion of um, this rubbing of a, using rubbing of like electricity. Alrighty, so the players that we have in the in the tribal electric effect, we have our protons and our electrons. These are both subatomic particles that possess um, charges. The proton has a positive charge and the electron has a negative charge. They are equal, um, their charges, but they're opposite in um, magnitude. Or they're equal in magnitude, but opposite. We also talk about neutrons, but the neutron gets the emoji with the complacent face because it is just it's a subatomic particle that has no charge. So um, as far as this video goes, we're going to be focusing on how protons and electrons interact with each other and not so much about neutrons. <laughs> okay, as an overview, just a brief definition of the tribal electric effect. Um, it's just the type of contract electrification. Um, on which materials become electrically charged after they're separated from a different material with which they were in contact. So pretty much it's just the rubbing of two materials, and um, then that's how we get a, an exchange of these two particles, electrons and protons. And later in the video, we're going to talk about the triboelectric series, which talks about... Um, the polarity and the strength of charges produced and how they differ according to their materials or roughness, temperature, and just other properties that they're made up of. Alrighty, here's a graphic. Um, just to demonstrate, so we have the pluses are protons and the minuses are the electrons. And so as we take this balloon and we rub it against this lady's hair, the negative charges, the electrons that were in her hair, are now, as you rub, the electrons um, escape from her hair and go to the balloon. And so she has, the balloon is left with these um, additional electrons and her hair is left with a net positive charge and the balloon has a net negative charge. Alrighty. Um, so looking at these two pictures, we see, um, I've been talking about hair a lot in this demonstration, I guess it has a lot to do with this tribalistic effect. So take a second and pause your video and 
look at these two examples and um, come up with ways maybe talk to, talk to yourself about um, how these um, these two pictures are different and how are they the same. I'll give you a second to pause and um, think that through. Already, so you've probably had plenty of time to do that. So um, just kind of looking back, just a quick reminder, we have the positive negative. And so looking at this picture, we know that the hair um, is more likely to, with the rubbing of the hair in the balloon, that the hair is going to lose the electrons and the balloon is going to end up with all those electrons. And one basic um, principle from uh, the the relationship between electrons and um, protons is that they um, both, uh, that the opposite charges, positive and negative, they attract each other. And so once um, the hair loses the electrons, um, the hair is now positive and the balloon is now net negative and they are attracted to each other. And so that's why the hair sticks to the balloon. But before, there was no real interaction between the two before they were rubbed. And then moving on to this other example with the child on the slide. Um, it's the same. There's some similarities and some differences. So um, with this first one, the hair is in direct contact with the balloon, so those hairs um, that are positively charged are now directly attracted to the to the um, more negative balloon. And with the example of the slide, we know that the tribal electric effect refers to the rubbing of two materials in order to create a net charge. So with the um, with the boy, we know that as he went down this slide that he lost a lot of his electrons that were in his hair, in and around and on his hair. And we see that his hair is standing up in all these different directions. And so you might ask yourself, like, why is it that his hair is standing up and going in every direction? And a simple, straightforward answer is that um, now that his hair is all net positive, each strand of hair is repelling itself. And so all of the strands are not really wanting to touch each other because um, the same, same charges repel each other. Alrighty, moving on. So take another moment to test yourself. Think of the, um, how you go about explaining um, to your roommate or to your parents of why you sometimes during a dry winter day go to reach for a doorknob or a light switch. Why is it that sometimes you get shocked? So just take a moment and maybe think of an explanation. Awesome. So obviously like the other ones, your body has a buildup from whatever it is, dry skin, Utah winters are horrible. And so so your dry cracked skin, you when you walk around on the carpet, you take up all these excess electrons and you just have them built up on you. And when you have a nice conductor like metal, <clears throat> they just love to take those electrons from you. And so when they do, you um you have this discharge of electrons that usually will give you a nice little zap. <laughs> Alrighty. So, like I said earlier in the video, there's this, um, I guess we went over this in class also, but for those who aren't in the class who are um, viewing this video, there's something called the Tribal Electric Series. And so this um, chart um, lists a number of different materials and how they um what kind of charge they have and what they're likely to um, get rid of or grab if it's negative. So human hands are more likely 
to acquire a positive charge, so they were are most likely to lose the electrons that they have, and these ones at the bottom of the scale are things like uh, silicone and Teflon. They are more likely to take the electrons from the things that are above them. And in the middle, we have things like cotton, paper, and steel, and wood. Um, they are, I don't know if you'd call it neutral, but they're just less likely to have much of these static qualities. So, um, as a small example, you have these um, materials such as saran and celluloid. If you can find those, um, saran and celluloid, you would have something, although celluloid is more on the, 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 the lower side and is more likely to acquire electrons, um, at this point, saran would actually take um, its electrons because it's further down. Um, so that's just a, a brief explanation of the tribal electric series. And now I just wanted to go through just one final real life application that um, I think is important for all of us to, to, to think about. So um, this is a little bit of a public service announcement for all those who have cars and um, who gas up their cars frequently. So as you um, fill up your car, they recommend that you do not get in and out of your car, that you, um, I guess so you have to get out of your car, but that you um, limit the amount of times that you get in and out of your car um, while you're um, getting gas. Because, so when you get in and out of your car, you generate all of these negative electrons from your seat, they get on your clothes, and just the, um, the friction that you um, causes all these electrons, these excess electrons that when you go to grab your, um, to grab the nozzle, I guess is the word, when you grab the nozzle from your car after, after filling up your car, you can actually, with, you know, when you, similar to when you shock yourself on a doorknob, you could also um, discharge those electrons onto the gas pump, onto the nozzle, and if there are any excess um, gasoline particles in the air, you can actually, there have been many, many cases in the United States where these particles have ignited and um, it has caused severe damage to the car and the gas station. And so just as a final application and as a little bit of awareness to just make sure that if you're, if you do get in and out of your car many times for whatever reason, that you, before you go grab the nozzle, that you discharge it on the frame of your car or elsewhere so that you don't risk, run the risk of, um, of discharging onto the nozzle and igniting the, the gasoline. So thank you guys for listening in um, and for learning a little bit more about the tribal electric effect.